Hello and thank you so much for joining me tonight. Tonight is Saturday Night Crafting and I thought I would switch it up a little bit and do a bit of a talky video and walk you through my Christmas card making steps. So tonight is going to be about bulk making Christmas cards. I'm going to share a couple of the tips and tricks that I use to make a whole ton of Christmas cards in a very short amount of time. I'll give you some alternatives um, along the way as well that you could use and you should hopefully have everything you need already in your stash. I will link everything I use down below if I can still find it for you in case you would like to look at those products. One of the first things I want to say is that often when people do Christmas cards they kind of get overwhelmed. They're thinking you need to make um, something cool, something pretty, something unique and you end up wanting to make a whole bunch of different styles of card but actually you're going to be sending your Christmas cards to a whole bunch of different people so it doesn't matter if they're the exact same card for everyone and that is a key trick in bulk card making just keep it the same and you will be able to pump out loads more and a lot more quickly and productively so normally in my card making I like to do really fun tips or tricks or techniques um, and have all my cards be unique and different and have something kind of exciting about them. That's my typical kind of style and I love doing cards like that. But for Christmas, I try and keep them as simple as possible to save on postage costs because I do send quite a lot overseas with my family being in Canada. And also it keeps your products down so you don't need to have as many different products your desk isn't going to be as covered or your work surface so we want to keep it simple and we want to keep it basic and that's what's going to get you through the process of making a load of Christmas cards now um, at the end of my video I am going to just briefly mention about my nail polish and what I've been kind of using so if you want to know about my nail polish because I've had a few people ask me um, then there'll be a little bit at the end of the video that you can watch or you just shut off the video if you don't want to watch anything about it so I will talk about what I use on my nails and that will be at the end of the video so the first thing that I want to do when I'm bulk card making to save time is use decorative paper I like making my own backgrounds I like getting creative and having fun with the styles and techniques I use to make the backgrounds but in bulk card making keep it simple and use pattern paper that you've got already so I have this simply made crafts paper that I was given to um, myself by craft stash as part of the design team and that's what I'm going to use today it's a nice thick paper or a nice thick cardstock I should say so I'm going to use that what you want when you're using a pattern paper as your background is you want something that's got light colors so look for patterns that aren't too busy or that are light because the darker ones and the busy ones make it just look a bit chaotic so use pattern paper to save on time use paper that is light and less busy or less busy so I'm going to use the top three here in my card making. I'm going to avoid these ones because they're a bit too crazy and the stamping won't show up very well. I am either going to use a basic colour, so keep it simple and just have black, or I'm going to use black and one other colour that coordinates with my papers, just so I don't have very many ink pads on my desk. Um, when I'm doing bulk stamping, I can then go ahead and re-ink this one if I need to. I don't have to then have all my reinkers and be thinking about all the different colors. If you have a stamp platform, that will save you a ton of time because then you can just do card after card after card after card and it goes quick. What I've got in my stamp platform is the sticky mat. Um, and this is a Jennifer McGuire idea. It's not mine, um, but this is what she does and it's great. So you just look on Amazon or whatever you've got that is closest to you. These are just die cutting mats. So any cheapo die cutting mat for something like the Cricut or the Scan and Cut, these are the mats that go in there. They're low tack mats. Now when you do get them, they are a bit too tacky and you can just use an embossing bag. So you want your embossing powder bags or some talcum powder or some cornstarch um, and you just kind of dab it on and it kind of helps to remove some of that stick so it's not quite so sticky. You just want a low tack 
um, surface and that will really help in your bar bulk card making as well. These ones are from Amazon and they're quite cheap. I bought, it's a pack of three or four and this is one cut in about half um, or just under half I think. And it's great because it's got the little measurements on it as well and it was cheap and this has been going for months and months and months and months and I just kind of wipe it down if I need to. So it's it really nice to have a little low tack mat because it means you're not having to then use the magnets all the time and take them on and off. You can just stick it on and then crack on. So a stamp platform is just so key in bulk card making. It just makes your life a lot easier and quicker. Obviously, if you don't have designer paper in your stash, then a background stamp or a small stamp that you could make into a background will work really well as well. And all you really need to do in that situation is just have two of a similar color family. So two purples, two pinks, two blues, and just kind of try and switch up the colors just to give it a bit more depth to it and a bit more character. So just having sort of two ink colors and some kind of background stamp um, or something you can make into a background stamp will be really good as well. Um, in this card that I'm going to share with you tonight, I am going to use a large background stamp. Now this is something I've been doing a lot in my videos, when especially when I'm doing card bulk card making, I use a large image stamp. And that just allows you to take up more of your page or more of your card and gives you a bit less work. So it's kind of like a little bit of a crafty cheater's way of making a card look fuller <laughs> without actually having to put too much effort in. So I'm going to use this penguin today in my Christmas cards for this year. He is so cute and fun and he just takes up the majority of a card front. So in the UK, most of our cards are a six size so this is an a5 sheet of card folded in half and this little guy will take up most of that card front and so it's brilliant to have um, as a background stamp or as a focal image stamp I should say another thing that's going to save you time in bulk card making is buying your cards and envelopes pre-made I don't tend to do this because I find it more expensive and I don't like the card that I get in the bulk card um, bun so I buy all my card stock from Lime Tree Craft and I get it in A5 and I just fold it in half. I buy all my envelopes from wherever is cheaper, eBay or Amazon. I just look at whatever has got the cheapest bulk envelopes and I usually buy 100 to 150 at a time and just keep them in a drawer in my office. So buying pre-made cards will save you time as well. Now the other thing we're going to use is glue and glitter. And this is an iridescent clear glitter. It's from Deco Art Glamour Dust. I will link it if I can find it still. I think it is on a website in the UK for around a pound, a pound fifty. But all you want is an iridescent sort of clear glitter. So when my glue dries, it will dry clear. And then you'll see the glitter, but you'll see the image through the glitter underneath which is what we want. We don't want to cover up the image because then it takes away that focal image. So we're going to use glitter and glue. And that is about all we're going to use in our card making today. So as I said before, we're going to use the light colors from the paper pack to do our background for our card. And I'm going to cut these down to be just slightly smaller than my card base. So if you're working in American inches um, with North American card sizes, then just cut it down to about an eighth of an inch on all sides, smaller than your card base. If you're in the UK, I go for half a centimeter smaller um, than my card base. I will also cut two sheets at a time because that saves me time and my paper trimmer can handle that. Um, this paper trimmer is fantastic. It's sold in a lot of different places and I will link this paper trimmer down below where you can get it um, from scrapbook.com as well as from uh, Hobbycraft in the UK. So the nice thing about the 12 by 12 cardstock is that you can get six card fronts out of it. So you can get several card fronts. So again, normally our card base is 14.8 by 10.5 on the front in centimeters and I'm going to cut it down to 14.3 by 10. So I'm just doing half a centimeter smaller than what I would have as my card base. So when we are all finished cutting our little card front panels, this is the only wastage we have. And most of you know, it's going to go straight into my little strips jar and then it's ready for another project in future. 
Now, just to say, I will be making more Christmas cards other than these um, to do more tips and techniques and fun cards. And those more bulky cards or stepped up cards will probably go to people that I can hand deliver to or maybe to teachers and stuff. These are my bulk making cards that I'm going to send to everyone that I would normally send to overseas or around here kind of thing. So um, I will do some more Christmas cards. These won't be my only tutorial. <laughs> right, let's get started. Let's crack out some Christmas cards. So we're gonna start by getting out our stamp platform and lining up our sheet into it. I used the grid lines already on this little sticky mat that I've mentioned um, at the beginning of the video. So I'm going to go ahead and stick that in there, line up my stamp, and then this is the exact position I'm going to do every single card front. Um, I'm going to use my Onyx Black ink, ink it up, and I usually do it twice. I did only have to do it once, once I re-inked my reinker. This is one of those football hockey puck things for the air hockey tables, um, the little maneuver thingy and I just wanted to have a go with this whole craze that everyone's going through with having a Chucky or whatever they're called and so I just picked up one of those it actually came as a pack of two with a whole bunch of pucks um I don't need the pucks obviously I got it from Amazon and it was shipped from China I believe so it did take quite a while to come but cheap and cheerful and it does work I am enjoying it so I've gone through and I've done all my card friends and have them ready for the next step Again, the key to bulk card making is the assembly line process. So do all of one step at one time and then switch to the next step. Now this sentiment I took from the Christmas tree one, I just liked it more than the one that came with the penguin. Obviously use whatever's in your stash, whatever sentiment you like. And I'm using, as I said before, an ink that kind of coordinates with my papers that is slightly darker. So on my gray ones, I'm going to use a dark gray ink and all the ones that have blue, I'm going to use a teal ink. So that's all I did to keep it as simple as possible, keep my desk as clear as possible, and so I can crack these out as quick as possible. So I go ahead and I stamp all the sentiments down on the fronts of every card, and again, it's so quick and easy when I've got a stamp platform to use. I know the Tim Holtz one is not available in the States anymore, but it is available in the UK and I think a lot of the rest of the world. I'll link this one down below where it's available in the UK, um, but I apologize to all those of you in Canada and the States because I don't think you can get it anymore. Right, when we move on to the next step, we need to make sure that the ink is dry. If it's not dry, your glue is gonna smear the ink and the glue is clear and dry see-through. Um, is clear and dry see-through? Yeah, so the, the, the glue is white and dries clear. <laughs> um, and it becomes see-through obviously. And our glitter is iridescent, so it's also see-through. And therefore, if we don't make sure that our ink is dry, we are gonna end up with a bit of a mess. So what I wanted to do was kind of add a bit of glitter. So I just did some of those dots in the background. I applied a little dab of glue. I didn't have to squeeze my glue bottle. I just literally touched it on. And then on that scarf, I painted on a thin layer of glue. Now you can dab it to kind of get it to stick even more. You can see that iridescent shine, which is really pretty. And it's really hard to see those little ones. So I apologize about that. What works best though, I found, so you can see here I do the assembly line process, I'm doing three at once, adding dots of glue, then painting the scarves. My glue is really awesome. I love this glue, <laughs> but it dries fast. So by the time I get to the third one, the glue's already dried on the scarf. So you can see here I have to go ahead and apply some more again. I've got that wide brush, which enables me to dust it off really quick. This is where I got smarter. So after doing those four, first four, I went ahead and did all the scarves and then I went ahead and did the snowdrops or the snowflakes, whatever they are. And I just put my glitter in my tray and gave it a gentle shake to kind of shift it to be wide across my tray and then dipped my card in it. And that went really quick and really fast. So I was just dabbing on the glue, sticking it in the tray and I got some glitter on there. No problem. Nice, quick and easy. So when you're creating your cards, you'll probably find nice little quicker, easier ways to do it as you're going. Um, but I'm hoping that some of these tips will help you out as well. So we've got all the card fronts done. All the glitter is on. They are all beautiful and shiny and iridescent. And now we're just gonna stick them to the card base, which is nice and simple and easy. So again, I'm gonna use liquid glue cause it's nice and quick. And I'm only gonna do the outside edge. And then I'm just gonna stick it on and then squish down the outside edge. We don't need glue in the middle. We're not doing any die cutting 
the middle is not going to matter whether it's stuck down or not. Um, our cards aren't wrinkly. It doesn't need the extra adhesive. Okay, so that is my batch of cards done. I will do a few more. I've got 26 done now. And this took me about an hour and a half roughly to do and the dry time is very very minimal because we are just putting such a light coating of glue on that it just dries fairly quickly by the time the glitter's on it there isn't much more dry time to go this is a great way to do some Christmas card making with children with adults with disabilities um, with elderly that maybe have arthritis or something along those lines it's quite a nice, simple, easy, basic design to kind of work from and work with. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you some inspiration. Um, and I just hope that you enjoyed hanging out with me. I really love doing YouTube videos. I've been having a lot of fun with it. I'm going to move on now to just briefly talking about my nail polish. So you can turn off the video now if you don't want to know anything about it. Otherwise, you can stick around and I'll just briefly talk to you about it. Um, this is something that I have been asked about before by a few people. Um, often you watch people's hands and you notice they've got nail polish on and things. I really love to do gel nail polish. You can see I'm not good. <laughs> These ones are particularly bad. I didn't have much time. They're kind of all over the place. But my nails grow so fast that I have to cut them every single week. And so I change my gels polish if I'm on it, every week and a half or so because it just grows out so quick. Now, I am not a nail technician. I know nothing about any of it. I just like to paint my nails. So as a word of warning, if you want to know what's in the nail polishes and you want to dig deeper and be careful with them, I'm not your person. <laughs> I am happy with gel polish as long as it works on my nails and it isn't drippy or and it doesn't have any issues, I should say. So there are a couple brands I really like to use. This brand is new to me and this brand I did not pay for. So I wanna make that very clear. Um, this company contacted me because they saw my videos and obviously my hands are in my videos all the time and I like gel nail polish. And they said, could we send you a little bundle? So on the screen here, you can see what they've sent me now. Um, and I thought, why not? I love gel polish and I'm having lots of fun with different colors. And so they sent me that little bundle for free. And um, I said that I would tell you about it and my experience with it and I'm going to give you a very honest opinion and honest review of it because I don't want to be leading you on um, if there are areas of concern or I want to tell you if I think they're great. So this is the nail polish brand, Rosalind. I believe it came from China and you can purchase it I think on Amazon. I'll put the links in the description box. They have given me a code to pass on to you so you can have a discount. I think it's 20% but I'll put that again in the description box at the very bottom. So just scroll all the way to the bottom if you want to see the nail polish. Um, it came like this in a bubble wrap bag I believe. So firstly the box is absolutely fine. I thought it was nice. Fine branding. Um, Opening it, obviously these marks weren't here. <laughs> I just put those on the other day when I was trying to work out what colors I wanted to do. There was no protection inside the box and I did message them about that and I said, this isn't brilliant um, because they can break, especially being shipped overseas. There's nothing in here apart from the, dear customer, do you like this? Give us a rating. So no instructions, no base coat or top coat. When I do my nails, I always put a base coat on. I always prep my nails. I file them down. I like sort the cuticles out. I file my nail to kind of rough it up a bit, put a base coat. I did three layers of color and a top coat. And they have been absolutely fine. They've performed just like a normal gel nail. The yellow was a bit more runny, a bit more almost kind of patchy when I applied it, but that is quite normal I've found for sort of light colors like this. I've seen it with other colors. So the packaging isn't brilliant when you open it up. I had one that leaked. You can see here it's gone a bit messy and I did inform them of that. The other thing I really dislike is the fact that there's all these numbers on the top and they mean nothing. There's no order. You don't have a clue what's in any of the bottles until you open them up. But that's not uncommon either. That is quite a common thing with a lot of cheaper nail polishes that you can buy in bulk. I love little ones like this. I know a lot of people complain about the size. These are 7 mils or 0.25 ounces. And I like this size because I usually get sick of a color by the time 
I've made my way through it anyways and you can usually get five or more manicures out of a bottle like this it's, especially if you're doing a different color on every nail they just last a long time so the disappointing bit it wasn't sealed very well and it had leaked it didn't leak onto anything else other than the packaging there's no colors so I can't tell you what colors in each bottle you do have to open each one or make yourself a little swatch so you know what colors are in there um, and then have the numbers written down but I do like my other nail polishes that give you an order to the numbers so there's some kind of organization and a lot of these numbers are wearing thin so that's a bit rubbish in my opinion I think they they need to work on sort of the packaging overall but the bottles are really nice I think it's a fantastic size they all seem a really good consistency um, they all performed all the colors that I tried these five colors performed exactly as every other gel polish I own so I'm not disappointed at all nothing's chipping and I'm really hard going on my nails which is also why I repaint them a lot as well I really don't I'm not gentle <laughs> I'm quite harsh so this company I would say yes they're worth a go um, if they fit your budget um, other than the packaging the product itself is absolutely fine in my opinion and I quite liked it so I will pop the link for them down below and I will put their discount code down below for you as well if you would like me to share with you again where I get my nail polishes from um, then just pop that in the comments so I know because I don't want to be wasting anyone's time but I do use a couple other brands that I really love as well that I purchase from Amazon. So if you'd like to know more about those, then I am happy to kind of pop it at the end of a video and give you a little description and walkthrough. So I hope that was fun and I will see you in the next video. Bye.